Great. Okay. So listen, let's make a start. Um, my name is Trevor Towns and I'm co-founder of Payzar and I'm delighted today uh, to be able to host uh, this webinar on the challenges of managing payroll in a high growth company. Um, especially pleased that we're joined by a fantastic uh, panel of guests with a breadth of experience and we'll introduce those in a moment. But before we before we do, do those introductions, um, we're happy to take questions along the way. So please submit any questions that you have into the, the chat or into the, the Q&A um, um, section you'll see at the bottom of your uh, Zoom screen here. We're recording the session today and we'll publish it through our social channels. So I'll give you an opportunity to look back and also potentially share it with any of your colleagues that are uh, interested. Um, so um, so if we, if, we, if we get moving then and we'll introduce our panelists. First of all, we have George Luca. Uh, George is a MIA payroll manager at ServiceNow. Um, and George has uh, fantastic experience uh, in a variety of different verticals and, and companies, Oracle, Finestra, Mises, Gorillas, and held senior positions for the last 10 years. So looking forward to uh, discussing some of our um, topics today with George. Um, Pierre Tenez is a global head of payroll at OLX. Um, and Pierre has had significant experience with Booking.com, Under Armour, and PwC. So interestingly, Pierre has seen it from both sides, both provider and uh, and um, and on the customer side. So I look forward to hearing Pierre's views. And uh, uh, Ronald Van Santen is Senior EMEA Payroll Manager at Equinix, and um, he's held senior positions with TMF, Cognizant, Foot Locker, and Deloitte. So I'm sure you'll agree with me that our uh, panelists have a, a wide range of experience, I think well qualified to talk on our subject today and um, you know some interesting pr perspectives. So I'd like to welcome our three panelists and thank you very much for, for joining us today. So um, I suppose we get started and we start, like our, our topic is challenge, the, the challenges of managing uh, payroll in a high growth company. And maybe I'll throw the first question out to Pierre and, um, and get moving. So Pierre, we want to talk about organizational maturity. So. In high growth companies, typically what we see is we see, you know, maybe the founders or the initial management team that has grown the business to a certain extent kind of is replaced and, you know, the adults come in to help scale the organization and grow it. And they become more sophisticated, you know, processes become more standardized, governance, uh, you know, more emphasis on, on governance and compliance and maybe putting manners on the business. So, as the business is evolving, how do you, how do you see the payroll experience uh, evolve alongside that? Thank you, thank you, Trevor, for for first of all the invitation and and for the, the great question. Um, um, every fast growing company, um, uh, once they, they grow, they, they are reaching a critical size where they need to really specialize the function, and and this is where payroll comes to play, and and payroll must find its place basically. Um, um, needs to find how payroll can add value to organization. So basically, as as organization gain maturity, payroll needs as well to gain maturity uh, uh, alongside. Um, and 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 for that, payroll must understand what is um, the org strategy, what are the org priorities. Um, is it is it to have um, a cost efficient, profitable um, uh, business and and internal functions. Is it um, uh, to be really agile and enable uh, a business to to have new openings to develop? Is it to 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 have payroll as a center of excellence with really great accuracy, uh, great payroll quality? Um, is it to gain better compliance? Um, uh, so so it, it, it's key for payroll to first of all understand what what it means payroll for the organization and what the organizational strategy where, where it's going um then regardless of of, of the the org strategy uh usually payroll needs to go through a transition um uh, when, when a company is small it's a bit disorganized um uh, and and usually you have someone from hr or someone from finance taking care of the payroll activities um, as as payroll is growing and 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 as what the company is growing um, and and the function becomes specialized, um, you need to start documenting the process. What 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 is payroll in the organization? What is payroll responsibility? Uh, 
and, and, and start defining segregation of, of activities, segregation of duties, um, defining the standard operating procedures. So that's the first step, documenting the process. Uh, the second one is uh, start standardizing uh, because as um, the company is entering new markets um, and, and the company gain maturity, you need to be able to standardize uh, uh, to be able to scale. So I would say that's the second step um, and, and that's how payroll will experience uh, maturity gain for the organization. And then the, the last step will be really simplification of the process uh, and, and automation to gain uh, productivity and, and also to be more in control of, of the payroll operations. Okay. So, so in a nutshell, that, that's the three steps that, that payroll will experience. First of all, to really um, uh, document the process. Second step will be to standardize, harmonize the process on the global level. And the last step will be to really integrate automation to enable uh, business to scale. Very good, George. If I could, if I could put that question to you as well, you know, what are the hallmarks of of that organizational maturity? Are there any additional items you'd you add to what Pierre is saying here? Or different perspectives. Well, I think uh, pretty uh, Pierre made a good um, yeah summary of uh, of the challenges, and um, uh, he pointed out uh, what are the key um, yeah, elements when it comes to the payroll and the organization. Of course, um, yeah, the, the the payroll department is quite special, and it, it is unique in each company because every company can have its own vision. Uh, either it's it's sitting in HR, either it's a special function, or it's a finance function. At the end of the day the payroll is responsible for paying the people on time. And it's very important, the process uh, to be clearly defined. Uh, of course, through the evolution of the company, things can change from technology, from um, even key stakeholders. Um, uh, and then that, that adds to the complexity that adds to the process new layers. And the company needs to be paying attention to the process and uh, who does what uh, to make sure that um, the, the the key function of the payroll is not lost and payroll knows uh yeah where it's where it stays in the organization and has the the ability to do the job very good ronald your two colleagues have had a chance to nibble on this one and uh um any any anything to add on this particular topic uh, no i think that the, the, the overall this is this kind of covers what I have experienced, especially at, at Booking and, and, mm. and, and Foot Locker with the growing markets and, and especially mm. all the different markets. And also one of the fun things that Pierre mentioned is segregation of duty. And especially uh, once uh, a company starts evolving and maturing, that becomes a hot topic as well. And that I've also seen payroll departments being swapped every now and then because it doesn't work on the one, it doesn't work on the other. These things, you don't know that upfront what is necessary. It depends on the strategy of the company, depends on whether a department is willing to, uh, to, to support a, a payroll department because payroll usually is part of either finance or HR, mm. but technically we're, we're kind of neither, right? I mean, um, if you're closer to HR, then deadlines might become an issue because you want to stay as want to be as flexible as possible if you're closer to finance then deadlines are important but you might not be as flexible as you want but if you want to have a proper segregation of duties perhaps we should have a separate payroll column within a company and that's one of the topics that become more important once a company starts to mature Interesting. So I've taken down a few pieces here, kind of hallmarks of a mature uh, payroll process. So we've just defined processes, separation of duties, standard operating procedures, standardization importance for, for scaling, and then to move to that kind of that next level, which is uh, all, like that automation, that simplification automation, but trying to balance this tension between how do we, um, how do we, be as flexible as possible to be attentive to what's going on in the talent market versus we want a 100% accurate compliance finance driven type process that's timely accurate and uh, and bang on bang on point from a, 
uh, you know, from a, a compliance perspective. So, so some interesting things. Do we ever get to a position of full maturity? Is that is that something? I don't know whether you know. Is it just one of those journeys that just keep keeps on running, or you know, have you experienced an environment where we're mature, we're steady state, we're in control, no fires to fight, no problems, great place to be. I, I'm seeing some <laughs> <laughs> great. Well, listen, look, you know, I suppose the the three of you are in positions to give it a good crack. Um, but it, but it is interesting because I suppose the organization is moving as well as the, yeah. um, as, uh, as well as the marketplace, right? There's a lot of things going on in the, in the marketplace as well. Um, just, just, just sure. like on, on what Ronald was saying, that is uh, for, for me, uh, eye opening is, um, payroll has always been the bridge between HR and finance, translating employee mutation into financial, you know, uh, records and, and, and payments. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and as Ronald was saying, payroll doesn't really fit in HR and, and doesn't fit as well in finance. It's a bit of, of middle. Yeah. Um, and, and more and more we can we can see payroll becoming um, um, most um, an important stakeholder mm -hmm. uh, in the organization because payroll sits on, on the biggest expense, staff cost. So we can really add yes. value to the organization and 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 and, and it's a very important element when it comes to profitability and, and budgeting and, and, and so on. So what I can see in the market is that payroll is becoming um, a new stakeholder within the company, outside of HR, outside of finance. Um, and, and it's still quite early, so it, it's quite yeah. a new change that I, we can perceive, but, but more and more uh, we, yeah. we are getting there. It's, it's, it's a super point you make, and I'm going to come back to that a little bit later in the webinar, because I do think uh, payroll is sitting on this treasure trove of, of accurate data that's, as you say, Pierre, it's, you know, the most accurate data about 70% um, of a company's cost base, which is, which is typically the percentage of labor costs. So I think, I think, I think what you're talking about there is potentially using that to stake a claim, not just to say we are the bridge between HR and payroll, but to stake a claim to say, hey, we're significant influencers here in this process. You should you should utilize us more. No, it's a super point. So listen, if we if we move on maybe to our next question, I'll start with Ronald. So uh so he he has a chance to have a, a look at this one first. So managing payroll in a company that's growing and changing very quickly uh, versus uh, a more settled organization. You know, what are, what are the kind of key differences, Ronald, that you see, you know, in, in, in how you build your teams, how you build your processes, et cetera? Um, what, what, what would you say the key differences are? Well, in, 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 in the, Pierre previously said that uh, once payroll um, it comes into, into, into play, um, usually it's someone from HR or someone from finance that starts working a bit with payroll and then, hey, we have a new entity in a new country, let's Google a vendor and let's just pick one that looks right, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's very ad hoc. It's very... Um, yeah, we need a vendor now, we need a new pay code now, we need this report now. It's all very project-based. Um, later on, other factors come into play. Um, do we hire country-specific specialists to take care of a specific country? Or would you buy that specific service from a vendor and rely on uh, people that are more... Um, experience in say data management and auditing data, for example. Um, yeah, and, and, and once teams start to grow, then you also have again that segregation of duties because once a, 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 a company starts to grow, someone needs to provide input, someone will need to authorize stuff, someone will need to check and that can't be done by people that all report into one and the same person. So it evolves. George, so, yeah. so 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 managing managing a growing team or a growing payroll function versus a settled one. Yeah, I, I believe um, um, the the complexity you know comes of course when the company is growing, they're expanding into different market. Usually, um, the growth in headcount uh, is not um, uh, sustained by the growth, let's say, in the or the process improvements. Uh, the 
the technology. So um, it's it's adding a lot of um, challenges um, mm. once the company is growing because uh, you still need to to process uh, the the payrolls. You have the same deadlines, uh, uh, but uh, the volume of the information is increasing. Headcount is increasing. The complexity and the questions uh, from employees mm. is increasing. So then you have to to see what's the best vision. Uh, what should the best process look for the company? Where indeed to invest, either in tools or mm-hmm. either in the in the building, uh, like Ronald mentioned, a specialized team with the knowledge. Uh, so it's very hard um, uh, to take the the let's say, the right decision, and it's uh, it's different from company to company. Mm-hmm. So from my past experience, um, yeah, there were technology companies that um, can yeah that grow, let's say, smooth because they had a good product and they were uh, growing. And um, sometimes the tools and the HR tools, the, the HR systems of record were growing as long side. So then the transition was smooth. But uh, in also some of the experience where the companies, uh, let's say, were growing, but they were focused more on um, operations and then the systems were left behind at the end, which then mm. came a bit challenge yeah. uh, for accommodating like a big headcount to an mm. inadequate uh, HR system. Mm, no, it, 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 it's true. It's kind of, let's stake out, let's stake out some new territories. Let's, let's win business and let's, you know, let's figure out operationally how we, how we get these people paid, how we manage our data afterwards. Yeah. So let's get scale first. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta bring Ronald in on this and I'm gonna, uh, maybe put a, a little slant then, Ronald. Like you see a greater emphasis on the, you know, in a more mature company, a greater greater emphasis on the cost of payroll production and optimization than maybe, you know, uh, in a growing company where companies are just, let's say, we, we're just going to throw money at this problem because we can't have payroll slowing us up. So, and 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 then if in terms of managing, you know, a payroll function in a more mature business, you know, are there different pressures or different KPIs that you're held to than in a growing business? Um, 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 the, the, the biggest struggle um, I experienced mm-hmm. when w- once a, a company became more mature was mm-hmm. especially data management and, and securing one source of truth for HR and payroll related data because you, you run to a country, you start processing payroll, you keep Excel sheets everywhere, et cetera, et cetera. The vendor has some data, HR has some data. And then once you start to grow, no one really knows which data is correct, which data is the actual source. That tends to be uh, that tended to be a, a struggle for uh, for quite some uh, some time. So one source of truth for most data is was a key thing for for us to uh, to look at, and and um, and and especially when when things start to grow, you, you need to see through all the ad hoc requests, requirements, product uh, projects, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Things pop up. As we speak, things are important today, but no longer important tomorrow. Three other things pop up tomorrow. They are no longer important the day after. So you need to be aware of the actual strategy of the company and then pick out the the requests that are actually really, really necessary. And that can be hard as well. Interesting point. Um, I suppose, like... It, it, what you're describing there is someone that's very finely attuned to the to the dynamics of the organization. Say, look, we could chase down these 20 things, but because the company is trying to expand in this direction, we, we can only really hook our priorities to those things where the company is going. Um, but you, do, you see, do you see any difference in cost focus? Or is it, a, you know, when, when people are looking at you to manage your payroll department costs, your payroll production costs, are those, are those really issues that, you know, are more to the fore in a mature business versus a, a um, you know, growing business? No, they definitely are because if, if, if a company is really growing rapidly, I mean, at first you reach out to a vendor, you start yeah. processing, you have like 10 employees, then a cost per payslip per month doesn't really matter. But if that uh, the, the employee count goes from 10 to 100, mm-hmm. yeah, then of course your fee will multiply by 10 as well. Then you go to 1,000, well, then the cost will be enormous. So at first you just 
look at what, which vendor looks right. But yeah, once you grow to say a hundred or a thousand, you really need to look into payslip cost and monthly cost because otherwise you'll just bankrupt the company basically. Yeah, okay. and not to mention that we're not talking about usually only right payslip calculation. There are other aspects like um, legislation, uh, making sure that uh, you're compliant with the law. Uh, also, uh, when it comes to uh, uh, other like KPIs, you mentioned Trevor, very very good example that when you're growing, of course, you always yeah, from a payroll perspective to be stock compliance. Now, making sure that uh, we're following uh, the 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 process and um, you know we're meeting the audit um, uh, requirements but then we also start to to measure the performance of the department to see exactly if the current uh, structure uh, is uh, actually meeting the demands um, uh, for the company that is now that grow to more headcount uh, you have to let's say responding to employee queries on time or um, uh, you have an accurate uh, payroll so then the kpi questions and the the, the governance model comes into question Okay. No, it's true. Like, you know, the cost of mistake, it's not just a direct cost. I think you're pointing to the cost of mistake. So if we go hell bent, we go very, very quickly, you know, perhaps we we're picking the wrong employment types, the wrong employment categories, you know, or we're maybe not paying attention to, to that aspect and they can be, they can be costly mistakes to unwind and not just in direct costs, but yeah. I suppose also reputational as well. So super. Listen, I think there's, I think there's a, a question in from if, if, if oh I sorry oh sure that, Pierre yeah sure. Yeah, so, so, so fully aligned with, with what Ronald and, and George uh, shared and, and also from my perspective the biggest um, uh, difference between an established um, company and a growing company is the um, expectation towards the payroll department um, wh when you have an established uh, company um, um, you have an established model, procedure, tool, set of control. Mm -hmm. uh, you just have to follow what, what is already in place. And, and there is little space for change. And, and, and there is more focus on being cost and, and org efficient. Yeah. Um, uh, so, so a strong focus on, on cost efficiency when you have a larger, yeah. you know, and, and more established organization. Whereas when you are in a growing organization, it's not at all the focus. The focus is about flexibility. Yeah. Uh, being able to adapt to uh, change, um, to be able to support the business if there is a new opening, if there is a, a, a huge um, uh, wave of new hires, for instance. Mm. Um, so, so, so then the, the payroll department needs to be more agile, um, uh, more solution oriented, uh, more yeah. flexible, and, and, and cost is not really uh, the priority. Um, still, still on on a, on a long term. Um, it's important because it, it must be sustainable, right? You cannot uh, pick up the, the most expensive solution in every mm. country. Uh, and then when, when the company will be big enough, it will be a disaster when it comes to cost efficiency. Mm. Um, uh, but, but, but it's not the, the main priority when the company is growing. Um, no, understood. No, I think I think that's that that's pretty good. So if if we were to kind of put our finger on on like you know a handful of the biggest challenges we've kind of spoken about here, one is putting manners on data flows, uh, agility and flexibility to be able to work with the organization, be solution oriented, but also being attuned to you know picking our priorities and hooking them to the to the corporate strategy to make sure that you know we're chasing the right things in payroll to support the business objectives. Um, but also with that eye to the future to say, if we put something in place now, while we're breaking new ground on new processes, we need to just make sure that the steps we take now are sustainable as the organization matures and, and expands. So, so I think there's some really good points there in terms of, of those challenges around, uh, around managing global payroll. Um, if I was to think about, you know, some of those challenges and maybe some of your experiences, um, are there any are there any things that you might do differently? Are there any like what what are kind of some of the key learnings or key experiences that you've had that you'd say, well, look, um, if I, you know, if I was given a challenge like this again, um, I would, you know, do do things a little differently. And maybe maybe if I if I give that to George uh, first to say, you know, 
don't name any companies or anything like that, but just say, well, look, you know, there were, there were certain kind of challenges that we had. And, you know, if we were starting again, we might, uh, we might, we might pick different vendors or a different yeah. payroll model. We might choose an aggregator or we might do everything locally or, you yeah, know, no, that's a, that's a very interesting question. And, yeah. and I believe it, it, it changes over time. So definitely yeah. my response now can change in the future because we're always uh, learning mm. from different experience and yeah, yeah. different aspects uh, can and come, come to the market each year. Yeah, each year. So yeah. basically if I would uh, right now think about the, uh, you know, the best way to approach this uh, uh, matter, I will definitely focus on the the process documentation and the, and and the technology. Because uh, when you're growing, you need to be to to be focused on on what's your mission, what what is the mm-hmm. process. You need to be fast and scalable, and having the the process documented uh, and all clarified with the stakeholders uh, what everyone's responsibilities etc can help you uh, run the payroll faster losing uh, yeah saving time on uh, chasing the accurate data etc and then focusing on technology will help you um, yeah grow uh, faster because even though at the beginning we might use or still use in some companies the excel the wonderful tool called excel file yeah, um, yeah. It, even for for a small company, there are now better options to do it. So it, we should not, uh, even if a small company, uh, try to do manual things because it's mm-hmm. waste of added value, waste of time, low added value, and we should don't focus on things that matter. Um, Ronald, any views on that? Any kind of things that you'd you'd say? Look, these are kind of key takeaways where I'd I'd change, I'd I'd do something different. Well, in, 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 um, when I first started with a, a proper startup, um, basically it was like, can you do this? Yes, we can. And we started running. Yeah. But I've learned along the way that I needed to ask more questions for when, how, why, especially, does it fit in the company's uh, yeah. uh, strategy, et cetera, et cetera, before you start doing and, and start running around and fixing stuff. Because it might not be beneficial for uh, the company or the team at all. It might just have been an ad hoc question being asked in a boardroom for a random reason. So try to pick the right stuff to to do to keep uh, to keep things moving otherwise you'll just be doing keep on doing things ad hoc all the time without set, setting up a proper foundation for mm. uh, for the payroll team okay pierre no oh, very good point ronald and and i I, th- I think we need to start with that. So, so you need to understand why, what are we trying to achieve? What, what a payroll transformation success means for the company? Where are we going? And, and this is like your long-term vision. And, and then all the action you will take, you need to, to um, look at this vision. Does it meet the vision? It doesn't make sense to, 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 to go there. And, and also include, um, as George was mentioning, include and, and manage your stakeholder. If you have your stakeholder included in the payroll transformation, um, you will be much stronger, right? So, so if you include HR, finance, um, you will avoid a lot of, of, of you know, uh, uh, challenges and, and uh, blind spots. So, okay. so that's two key points. And, and if I can add a third one is yeah. to uh, really uh, upskill your team, upskill your team member to be mm. more agile, to also do cross country training so they can back up each other and 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 really to um train your team to to adapt to the change and to embrace it uh and and to 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 see uh the opportunity in in embracing change so i would say that that's the three points define okay. your vision. second one is um include your stakeholder and and third one is upskill your team uh, to to be able to embrace the change no, it's, it's it's interesting um, because now where we're going to see if I can take the discussion is to say, okay, so you've kind of you you've started to put manners on this startup, you've started to put manners on on process, get things aligned while still maintaining some agility to support the business. So you're you're not pulling away from the business, right? You're pulling with the business still. So now you're starting to mature a little bit, and you're taking that next next step from look, we used to be a thousand employees. 
in five countries. Now we're 5,000 employees in 15 countries. How do you, when you're, when you're, when you're kind of sitting at that, at that, at that place where you're a thousand and five employees, five countries planning to get to 5,015 countries, Pierre, what kind of steps or things could you do now to, you know, maybe plan for that to help future proof your payroll, you know, um, and, and anything come to mind there that you can share with, uh, with our, with our guests on the webinar. Yeah. Thank, thank you for the question. So, so I think the, the, the most obvious thing is to leverage technology, uh, to, to be able to scale. Right. So, so, and, and, and to enable the use of technology, you need to make your process, uh, simple and, and harmonized. So first step is we need to harmonize, simplify your process so you can leverage technology and, and automate uh, some part of the processes. Um, um, and, 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 and then when this is done, um, um, connect, integrate system, uh, look for RPO opportunities to remove as much manual workload as you can because manual workload is not scalable. Right. So if you have 100 employees and you go to 1000, then it's going to be 10 times more work if you have manual workload. Mm. But if you use technology, technology can absorb, a system can absorb, like it doesn't matter if it needs to do one, one Excel uh, formula calculation or 1000. It is the same, same you know, amount of, of uh, efforts for, for a system. Um, and, and then also to be future-proofing is really to have a good access to payroll data uh, and to reduce uh, data sources. So, so when we talk about the payroll process, there, there is three big parts. Uh, the input, uh, payroll processing, and post-payroll processing, post-payroll activities. Uh, so, so to be future-proofing, you need to simplify and, and reduce the number of First of all, data source input, um, streamline the payroll processing part, maybe uh, harmonizing your uh, payroll delivery model. So instead mm -hmm. of having multiple providers, having a single one and using an aggregator model to, to really streamline and have a unique process. Um, and then on the post payroll activity, uh, there are great systems that can automate most of it, that can automate uh, global payroll reporting um, uh, to generate uh, the, the GL file, the payroll journal from a gross unit file. Um, um, yeah. So, so for each part of the payroll process, you can really simplify, look at, at automation or, or um, technology opportunities, um, and, and this will enable you to, to be able to scale and to be mm -hmm. future proof. Okay. Good. Um, George, Ronald, either of you fancy coming in? Any Anything you'd leave, you wish to add there? Um, well, if, once companies start to grow, and especially if you have, if, if you would look at it from a payroll specialist perspective, and especially mm. if the payroll specialist has to deal with multiple countries, because some countries or, or entities might not be as big as others, then planning becomes key as well, sticking to deadlines, make sure that everyone delivers his data on time, and also make sure that everyone knows what happens if you don't deliver on time. Because say today you have to deliver data for company X, and tomorrow it's it's entity Y, but company X doesn't deliver, then it not only jeopardizes the pay date of company X, but it might also jeopardize the pay date of entity Y. So planning is also key and make mm. sure that everyone is aware of the planning and sticks to it. Mm. Good. George, anything you want to come in on there? No, I just want to highlight that uh, what Pierre mentioned is very important, the data uh, that uh, mm. should should be you know, um, available, even doesn't matter the number of countries for mm. payroll, the standards are the same. So we want to have the, the, the data in uh, yeah, reports as much as possible, standardized reports uh, to, to ensure that we can process effectively the, uh, the payroll for the higher company, a uh, higher uh, number of employees and uh, leverage the technology to get the standard reports that Pierre also mentioned. So we can mm -hmm. replicate the, the same process uh, what we do for five countries for the 15 countries. Very good, yeah. So I'm, I'm getting this theme of, you know, simplification, automation, technology, and uh, just make sure everyone who, who is um, involved in that data uh, preparation cycle 
understands the responsibilities and and cascade effect of of problems when they uh, when they when they don't deliver on on promises to deliver data to payroll. So uh, something it's I'm going to take this in a slightly different direction. And and just before the call, I noticed something on LinkedIn published by Josh Barson, and um, it hopefully this will bring us back. Uh, back to the data piece in, in a few moments, but um, they've done a survey on what's top of mind of, of employees, and they surveyed something like four and a half thousand employees uh, with you know ranking things that were top of mind. And in 2022, the most recent survey results is uh, covering monthly expenses has shot up to number one on the list from number nine on the list last year. So people are really concerned about. Um, cost of living, which, you know, is everyone's problem, but then becomes the employer's problem because inflation is potentially now starting to drive pay demands. And um, Josh Barson, Barson used a, a, a phrase in the report, which was, we're now moving to a world of ever-changing pay, right? So I read that and I was thinking to myself, you know, this is going to start driving higher and higher transaction volumes for our payroll teams, different types of benefits, changes to benefits, more frequent change to payroll. Um, I just wonder from, from your perspective where you're sitting across, you know, these fantastic companies, are you starting to see um, increase in, in the transaction levels that are starting to come across your teams in different countries? Yeah, definitely. And and then per, perhaps it's not just inflation, etc. But it's also there's no lack of talent in the world, but there's yeah. too many jobs. So p- uh, companies mm. uh, invest in, in allowances, other fancy perks that mm. attract talents, etc, etc. So they do everything they can to attract the talent they need to mm. keep on growing and, and, and be successful. Mm. So I don't think it's just inflation. Well, it's an interesting perspective. George, have, have you a view on this? Yeah, I, I totally agree with uh, Ronald on this. And um, um, I would say not necessarily could be uh, new programs, new yeah, allowances, things uh, that are, are brought up uh, on, on the table that, of course, need to be implemented in payroll. And payroll play, mm. plays an important part. But also from my, my view is very important in different employees that now and more than ever they really look at their pay slip and they want to understand to make sure that everything is correct so uh you quite see an increase in payroll questions okay uh, i would say and um, also um a higher attrition so probably more people will start to, to look for a higher compensation and then change the the company so on payroll that's a termination mm-hmm. and then usually it's a backfill and then it's a new hire Mm. So it's it's definitely increasing uh, uh, workload for the payroll teams. Okay, so if I if I was to bring that back, then increasing increasing workload somehow you need to solve that particular transactional problem. Back to the data, back to your data sources, back to automation. So correct, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The process yeah. needs to be fast, uh, robust, automated, right. so yeah. you get everything, uh, yeah, corrected, everything uh, updated on time. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and Pierre, any any views on this? The is it we, we're hearing Ronald and George saying, hey, it's not just inflation. The the demands on on the global payroll team are just going up anyway. Yes, it is, and 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 we can see that the job market is really tense, and and company are quite aggressive. Mm. In, in you know providing new benefits mm. for, for being more more attractive to talented people so oh we are offering this new benefit mm. uh, join us because we offer this and your current company is not offering it mm. or we also offer for instance pay as you earn we can see that more and more um uh, th- these kind of, of companies that that are providing the service to to be able to uh, pay advanced salary or, or mm. to pay pay on demand yeah, on demand, on demand pay, mm. exactly. Mm. And, and this goes together with inflation because inflation um, uh, really p- put more pressure on, on money and on salary. Um, mm. and, and it's often linked with, with salary inflation. So, so people, mm. to counter the inflation, the cost of living that are increasing, they are expecting to get more as well. Uh, and, and if not, then they are looking outside to more, also get, get more. So uh, um, 
usually HR they, they, they look for for uh, ways to tackle that, mm. and then it means it translated into payroll. We need to process new allowances. We need to process salary increase, and 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 so on. Uh, so, okay, so, so more 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 demanding for for payroll. Yeah. Uh, okay, so so I suppose. Um, we do have a couple. We do have a couple of questions in from the audience that you want to get to, but I do want to come back to just one last one, uh, because it was related to something uh, we discussed earlier um, in this, and it was like the power of the data, right? So I think Pierre, you mentioned it earlier on, uh, the power that you know the power of the data that um, payroll sits on, right? And also then you know, well, actually, with the power of that data, payroll should be a lot more influential. Um, what are the sort of things that you would see in your, uh, Pierre, that you would see that uh, payroll can add real value beyond the transactional piece, right? That can say, well, actually, listen to me, I have something interesting to tell because I've been looking at these numbers. Yeah, so, so definitely we, we can uh, provide insights on labor cost. What, what, what is driving the labor cost in said country? Um, uh, is it is it driven by overtime? Then then, in terms of strategy and and, and uh, the, the company leadership can de decision. Okay, shall we develop the headcount in this country? Shall we invest elsewhere where the labor cost is is lower? Um, so we can we can really deliver uh, to, to to the leadership team key insights on on labor cost component for them to have, have clarity on on. If it makes sense to develop business in that country in mm. terms of profitability, or or maybe to um, invest and develop uh, customer service in in different country because the labor cost is is uh, mm. lower. Um, um, so so indeed, payroll can really add value and and drive some key business decision on on in which country to mm. operate, which country to develop, which country there is an issue with with labor because they are doing too much overtime, for instance. Mm -hmm. and, and then can translate, okay, what is driving this overtime? What we can do to also improve the operational uh, mm -hmm. activities uh, to reduce this overtime? Yeah. Ronald, maybe a similar question to you about the, about the data. Um, do you think there's enough emphasis placed on the, you know, the, the payroll team to deliver those insights? Or do, or, or do you feel overlooked? Not you personally, uh, but the industry generally. Well, I think it is kind of a struggle for a lot of companies to have proper reports from payroll because you work with different vendors in different countries. So mm -hmm. reporting tends to be an issue anyway. So if you want to report on a global level, usually you have to compile that from several Excel and PDF formats and then come up with uh, with something. But if you really have all data in one format, in one, one tool, you basically you could report up to well, hey, this um, this uh, this particular department has way more overtime uh, compared to the other. That can be very helpful to determine mm -hmm. what's going on, right, what might be an issue, etc. Mm -hmm. We have the data, but usually it's not properly structured to be used in a reporting tool because it's all over the place, and that yeah. tends to be a problem. Yeah, no, I, I can see that the overhead of trying to draw it all together so that then you can derive insight, make sense of it. And then, you know, that, like when you are faced with the challenge of um, increased transactional demand, expansion, et cetera, to be able to carve away the time, to be able to put the structure in place, uh, put the systems in place to organize that data and, and drive insight from it is it, 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 it can be a tough challenge. I think Pays are some of the answers to that, by the way, but uh, we'll, we'll talk about those a uh, little bit later. George, just to close on this one, then I have a question from the audience and then we're going to take a look at maybe some of our technology and how we can help on the reporting side. Yeah, definitely, data is is, is very important, uh, and, and I just want to to close with the uh, you know the compliance uh, aspect because uh, payroll um, is 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 in the front when it comes to the statutory audits, uh, and it's very important to make sure that the the, the data is is accurate and it it's processed uh, mm -hmm. correctly to the authorities because then otherwise the company can can pay a, a big fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, listen, I, 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 what I'd like to do now is, I suppose, on the, the, the concept of the data, the, you know, reporting and, you know, helping organizations in that growth 
um, you know, in that growth phase to get data organized. Um, hand over to my colleague uh, Matt, who might uh, spend a few minutes just maybe showing some of the some of the things that we have at PayZar that might might align and underpin some of the topics we've discussed today. So over to you, Matt. Great, and Trevor, thanks very much for that introduction. So hi everyone, my name is Matt Grogan and I am a senior product analyst here at PayZar. So let me just share my screen here now and we can get started. So on my screen here at the moment, um, I'm just going to be showing you a brief overview of the reporting capabilities that we have here within PayZar. So we all know that the most accurate form of data available is that related to payroll, because the standard has to be 100% all of the time. That is why here at PayZar, we provide a consolidated view on all of your global data so that you can easily see this in one platform. On the screen here at the moment, you're looking at the payroll dashboard. So this payroll dashboard, as you can see, contains four graphical representations. Three of these graphical representations represent um, element groupings, so those elements that have been loaded to the environment that are associated with our gross pay elements, our employer contributions, and our employee deductions. We have a further fourth graphical representation that just represents a counter on the amount of employee records that are being loaded into the system uh, for each payroll period. All of these graphical representations can be easily drilled down and broken down further so that we can easily identify some further underlying trends that may be present in the data. So as you can see on the screen here at the moment, we're able to see a global view on our payroll cost trend graph, which just shows a view of the trends between our gross pay elements and our employer contributions. If you wish to view this data and more of a country specific view, you can do so as well. And if you wish to view this data in a tabular view, we also provide this functionality. You can drill down this tabular view um, to easily compare and contrast the current period of data versus the previous period of data. And you can drill this down to a pay group level view, or if you wish, you can drill this down to an employee level view if you do have access. It is worth taking note here that within the PAYSER application, there is no need to be altering or modifying any local element names. You can simply map that local element name to a globally recognized tag that we have here within the application. So that when you go to upload your gross to net file for a pay period, the data that is contained within that local element will be simply mapped and stored within that globally recognized tag. Speaking of global tags, if you wish to view the movement and tracking of global tags on a month to month basis, we also provide a further graph that you can easily see any trends or patterns that are contained within these elements. So you can very clearly see here on this graph that there, if there is any changes in salary for employees, if any employees were to receive an increase in bonus or an increase in salary on a month to month basis, or I should say period to period basis. And furthermore, in addition to all of these currency and element fields that I've just shown you, we also provide um, further in-depth analysis into the tracking of our employee records. So this would be quite helpful in supplementing your HR system data, because you can very easily and clearly um, identify your employee attrition across your global view of your organization. And if you want to um, filter down and identify where and what employees are present across which payrolls, this can all be carried out um, as part of this further in-depth analysis. So all of this pre-built reporting capabilities that I've just shown to you here can help you answer a lot of your payroll questions. However, there may be some outstanding questions that may require further in-depth analysis. And that is why here at PayZer, we provide you with the ability to create some custom reports. These custom reports are contained within our data analyzer section, and they are their configuration of these reports is completely customizable and up to the user creating them. They can view the data that they want to view only and exclude any other data that may be unnecessary at this moment in time. If we take a look at our Australian overtime cost report, we have set up this report to focus on our Australian pay group and any of the associated overtime costs. Um, as this configuration of the report is customizable, we have selected a wide range of elements that were loaded as part of the gross net upload. The, the customization and configuration of this report is very straightforward. And when you do have your results generated, you can very easily switch between a pay group currency view 
and a global currency view so that you can get both your pay group, your local and global views in the same area within the platform. And if you wish to export, you can export in both a global and pay group currency. So as I've shown you, these reporting capabilities within the system give you great visibility into your operational data. Um, and because you already have all this data loaded into the system already, we do provide you with the ability to employ the use of our Accounting Connect module. So this Accounting Connect module allows you to uh, maintain and manage your general ledger accounts through the use of a central hub. So we're going to focus on our Netherlands GL summary here today. And as with the previous report that I just showed you, the general ledger reporting is completely customizable and depending on what the, dependent on what the user wishes to view. You can decide whether you want to view some local descriptions if you wish to, to view a global, or if you wish to include both descriptions, you can do so. You can set up an infinite number of group buys. As you can see, we've set up two in this sample report. And of course, the core component of general ledger reporting is the debits and the credits. So Pacer can simply aggregate all of these for you so that you can very clearly see that the total debits will match the total to credits. And once again, and once again, all of this data can be swapped between a global view and a local pay group currency. And through the use of setting up custom layouts as part of our general ledger, you can export and map columns and rows from the system in so that when you export the data as per a global currency or a pay group currency, have the layout that you have predefined within the system will be exported and shown as that. So I hope today that this very brief demo of the reporting capabilities here within the system have enabled you to see how you could use Payzar from a global perspective. All of these reporting capabilities, when combined with this Accounting Connect module, can ensure that Payzer can be a very important and powerful tool, one that can help you manage, maintain, and make the most out of your data. Thanks very much. Good. Thanks very much, Matt. Um, appreciate that. Um, we've, I think, time for one more question before we go, and uh, um, we'd one in from one of our one of our webinar guests. Um, and just to maybe put this out to George in the first instance, uh, George, what are the best checkpoints to have to be able to provide accurate data? Uh, accurate payroll because systems will provide outputs based on the inputs that you need sometimes but you get errors as part of pre-payroll and post-payroll activity so i think what i think what um what the, this user is saying look we have different systems feeding into payroll mm -hmm. they're giving us different uh different formats you know how do you straighten that out to drive uh accurate payroll so I think um, and the shortest answer uh, from a, a finance perspective is what comes in comes out. So basically make sure that everything was that was sent uh, to the payroll was, was processed. Of course, based on the company specific and if we find any issues, it's very important to uh, to reach out to the stakeholder that is owning the topic. Could be HR if it's uh, related to the mm -hmm. master data or compensation and benefit is related to bonus to make sure that uh, they uh, check the process and make sure that uh, information sent to payroll is accurate because at the end of the day, the payroll process the data. And we have we need to make sure that upstream, our partners also understand the criticality of the timeliness and accuracy of this information. Okay, let's see. Are there any other questions before we, before we leave? I might check the, to see if there's anything else in. Let's see if I can get a short one here. So in the meantime... Oh, yeah. Oh, so go ahead, yeah. Please, please, Pierre, I have one here. Yeah, so, so, so as Luc, uh, uh, George was saying, uh, garbage in, garbage out. Uh, so, and, and most of the time, payroll must educate its stakeholder. Why do we need accurate data? Uh, and why do we need our stakeholder to respect our, our deadline? And, and, and so it comes with education. On, on why it matters, what why is it is it important, but also we can help them in, in putting in place some set of control to ensure that that the inputs we are receiving and they are sending to us is verified and approved before sending for payroll processing. And then on the payroll processing side, so it's the middle part of the process. Uh, usually, the best practice is to have uh, the four I principle: someone that prepares payroll and someone that review, uh, two different persons. 
um, and, and, and then a third level review when, when, when the pay, uh, payments are ready. Um, uh, usually that's, that's the best practice. Okay. Ronald, anything to add? No, 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 I agree. I mean, usually we don't know what's right, but we can tell uh, the, the, the people delivering data to payroll that if it's not, what happens? There you go. Someone is going home with an extra million euros in their in their uh, pay slip. <laughs> okay. Um, one last one then. Um, the panel seems to agree that data process, processing, and agility are critical to company success. Um, this is a little provocative now when I read the second part of this question. What stops the payroll department from being hyper efficient in these areas? So, uh, Ronald, do you want to have a go? What, what um, what's what's holding you back? <laughs> usually, the late delivery of data holds me back in, in, in being able to 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 process stuff uh, timely and accurately. I mean, if usually if, if data is delivered late, either it's overtime or you have to cut corners. Well, cutting corners is not it's just it's not, not done in payroll. Yeah. Paying late is not done in payroll, so that means overtime. So, yeah, educating your the, the people delivering stuff, like Pierre said, is, is very important, yeah. yeah. Pierre or George, you want to come in on that one? Yeah, or, I think... Or, um, or has uh, Ronald got us? <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a very, uh, let's say, controversial topic for sure. Uh, but, um, yeah. yeah, at the end of the day, um, we... we it's also a limit what the payroll department can do, right? Because uh, we rely on the data from other mm -hmm. departments and the, we coordinate with other stakeholders. Uh, yeah. But sometimes these priorities don't match. So payroll can can request uh, standard reports, can request work data to be updated, but it's always a, a decision, a mm -hmm. management decision, where to set the priorities. So if it would be like in an ideal payroll world, yes, everything should be in the standard format, mm -hmm. but the cutoff, uh, et cetera. But yeah, we, there are other key factors, stakeholders that we cannot influence. And then we have to, like uh, yeah, Roland mentioned, work to make sure that uh, the, the payroll is completed uh, on time, keeping in mind like the, the audits, the standard compliance, uh, et cetera, and the accuracy, sure. of course, of the payments. Okay. So listen, I, I'm, I'm conscious of time. Um, what I'd like to do is I'd like to draw a close uh, to our webinar today. I'd like to uh, make a sincere thanks to Ronald, Pierre, and George for joining us today and sharing your insights and experience from uh, your, your deep and broad experience uh, in global payroll. So thank you, everyone. I'd like to thank everyone else who's attended today and the people that posted questions uh, to our chat. And just a reminder, we'll post this webinar uh, through our social channels. So feel free to look back, feel free to share and like them. And um, we'll see you at a, a PESAR webinar again soon. So thanks, everybody. And uh, have a great evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers all. Bye. Bye. Bye.